Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to bring you this pretty much makeup look, but I'm not really doing makeup. I am basically just sharing my unpopular opinions. Um, and I feel like a lot of them are pretty extremely unpopular, so yeah, there's no hard feelings. We can all have different opinions, you know. If you have a different opinion, if you want to talk about it, then leave a comment down below and we can surely talk about it. But yeah, so basically, if you want to see, <laughs> then just keep watching. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing my unpopular opinions today. I just thought, like, honestly, as a person, I have a lot of opinions that people don't agree with, like, in normal day-to-day -day life. Probably start talking on YouTube. This one I'm going to say is that black people cannot be racist. And a lot of people don't agree with this because they think um, racism is basically, like, it's based off of race, blah, blah, blah. You can be racist because... Black people being racist because we can be racist against white people. And I personally do not agree with that. I think that black people cannot be racist just because we, first of all, are a minority. So we can't be racist in a dominantly white society. For example, like white people can basically decide whether they want to just not support black businesses because there's not that many and they're not dominating in the society for like it's so simple like they can choose they can only want to go to target mcdonald's things like that because those are all owned by big white corporations they can decide oh i don't want to go to a black owned business i don't want to do this but we cannot really do that like it's going to be very very hard for a black person to decide to only support black businesses because it's not a prominent thing it's like the power thing it's basically about who has the most power in society. You can be prejudiced against a race, for sure. You can be very degrading and discriminatory against a, a race, yes. So like black people can have opinions about white people that are actually racist, cannot be racist, but we can be prejudiced because we can be prejudiced based off of race. White people can be racist because their racism actually has an impact, is what kind of what I'd like to say. If you guys disagree, then let me know in the comments. Um, I've had this really strong opinion. Most times my opinions don't really sway as much because I have developed my opinions from like research in class and different things like that. So when people, sometimes people get like, they're like, oh, you're like not open-minded. And I'm like, I am open-minded. I'm open-minded to hearing what you have to say and I understand what you have to say, but that doesn't mean I have to change what I have to, what I believe just because I understand where you're coming from. My second unpopular opinion is that um, you cannot have a preference based off of skin color. And I feel like all of those preferences based off skin color is literally just colorist. It's just hidden colorism. And I feel like skin color has nothing to do with how a person is attractive. Like it really has nothing to do with it. Because someone's like, I love dark skins. First of all, you're saying dark skins as if it's like a race or like a qualification. And I really don't understand because it has nothing to do with anyone's characteristics. I like light skins like this. Why? Why do you have that reasoning? It's a reason why you have that and it's based off of colorism. Like you have to understand that. I don't know. Preference is what you drink. It's like I prefer tea over coffee. It's a taste. It's like a qualification. Like, and I just don't understand how skin color has anything to do with attraction. It doesn't because the same person literally take a carbon copy of me and create me to be light skinned. And would you still, would you say you want to be attracted to me now because I have a different skin color? That doesn't make sense. I feel like you have a preference based off of race, but not skin color. Like, you can have a preference based off of race because you can say, oh, like, as a black person, you can understand my struggles or ethnicity. So, like, saying, oh, okay, like, I want to date a Nigerian person because, you know, they have the same culture, similar, blah, blah, blah. That makes sense. That has like a qualification, it has merit to it. But a skin color has nothing to do with it. And people come, like literally, I don't like when people say that because it doesn't make any sense, it has no merit. And it's literally just colorism, like hiding behind your color things by saying these preferences. Like I'm like, oh, why do you like that? They're like, I don't know. Or like, they're like, oh, because they're like this. No, how are you gonna group a whole group of people? Like, how are you gonna say one skin color is this way and another skin color is this way? That doesn't make any sense. Like you're saying light skin people are sensitive and dark skin people are more, aggressive no and if you keep putting in like if you keep on pushing that narrative then obviously sometimes it's going to be true but it's not going to be true all the time if you keep pushing that narrative that is just going to keep getting worse for us people like those are two negative things to say about a group of people i can people say that because it shouldn't matter skin color has nothing to do with love at all the same way that you're saying you want to date someone i feel like it's like oh i, I prefer if my baby comes out white if my baby comes out dark why do we care what is the point in that? Like you shouldn't love someone determined off their skin color, like based off their skin color. It shouldn't be the determinant of anything at all. So my third unpopular opinion is that black people are not monolithic. So which means like we don't, we're not one, we're not one way. Basically we can have different opinions, just like I'm sure that you guys have different opinions right now. And it's, that is okay. We don't have to all listen to the same thing. 
um, we don't have to like your black card is not revoked if you don't do certain things or if you actually enjoy doing things that predominantly white people like to do different reasons for why they like everything and like we don't have to have the same opinion all the time you know I don't think that black people are monolithic and we don't have to do all the same things we don't have to we're all very very different I mean, we have different backgrounds and black people are the black women especially are the most oppressed group of people because first of all we have to deal with not only racism but sexism and like sexism has trumped racism so much we still have not tackled sexism at all and we're still working on racism right now obviously these are two different battles that we have to face and they're very very different and but they're also like intertwined at the same time the fact that we have to deal with that from not only like our black men but also the rest of the world it's kind of, you know, it's a different battle that most people don't understand. Given that, like, I believe that black women are like the trend. Not even the trend, like, we're the trendsetters. We have done so much. Like, what people say is ghetto is, you know, a trend now. <laughs> like, a lot of things, like the long nails and, like, all this other stuff, the way people talk, the colorful wigs, all those other things, like, that we have done and that was deemed as ghetto or, like, I don't really believe in ghetto-ness or, like, you know, I don't really like when people say that word so freely just like the word there's certain words i really just don't really like as much like nappy i feel like we haven't established what that means we need to kind of come together and be like what does that mean because people just say like people with like straight hair like maybe white people have said oh my hair is nappy it's not nappy like your hair can never get nappy because that's not what like that was a demeaning term so your hair can't get nappy because even though it's just tangled you know what i'm saying we shouldn't be using nappy as the word tangled i really hate this word and i'm only going to say it once because I really do hate it and I feel like we should really stop saying this. Whole society, like in general, we should stop saying the word retarded. That is not a good word at all. And like, I don't know why it's so, every time I hear it, I cringe so hard. And like, that really disturbs me because I feel like disabled people don't really have as much representation and we just kind of push them to the back corner because they're not normal compared to us, which is not true. They're actually quite beautiful and like very, very, I don't know, special in their own way. I feel like we should really do a lot more with advocating for disabled people because just because we don't understand, we have this thing about as a human race, this is called othering, where we feel like like if someone is not like us, or if we don't like they're different, then they're other, other than. Like, and in that way, then we just kind of discriminate against them because we don't understand them. And that's the same thing that, that, that has happened with like, if you look at all the patterns between like marginalized communities, it's because of othering, to be honest. It's because white people don't under, didn't understand which you are, so you're not them, and now you're other. <laughs> so and now you're not as good as them because you're other. So the same thing with the disabled community. It's just because we don't understand, or we haven't grasped the understanding, or tried to even understand or learn their way of learning or their way of thinking, then they're other than, and they're just not not good or you know they're pushed to the side and i don't think that's true and i feel like we should stop saying that word because that is one step taking forward to like advocate for disabled the disabled community in general people like walking on eggshells with like what they can and cannot say because they feel like they're going to say something wrong and i feel like it's because that we created like this canceled kind of culture thing which is kind of bad and good at the same time because cancel culture has proven not to work because we don't we lack discipline as commu like as a community, as a whole. I wouldn't say personally, but as a whole, everyone lacks discipline in, in what we actually can do. And, you know, like, I feel like we had so much change in the civil rights movement, in the civil rights eras, because they didn't lack discipline. If they wanted to do a bus boycott, they would go out of their way, wake up earlier to walk, like, hours to get to their job, then to work there, and then to walk back home. You know what I'm saying? It may be a more dangerous way, and it's less convenient, but we cannot even do that as this generation. We're so convenient and complacent in what we have how far we have come, but we have gone, we have gone nowhere. I've really seen this um, quote today. If you stick a knife nine inches into my back and pull it out three inches, that is not progress. Even if you pull it all the way out, that is not progress. Progress is healing the wound. An American hasn't even begun to pull out the knife, which is so true. And we are so complacent that we think that, oh, we've gone so far because I don't know, we can, like we're technically equal but if you think about it there's been so much more concealed things like racism has just evolved like it's evolved to a more concealed manner you know like in society in society it's still okay to be racist but only in the concealed manner if you're overtly racist like then it's like oh you're the worst thing in the world but 
concealed racism is still the same thing, you know, and it's actually even more harmful because you can't even protect yourself because you can't see it coming. <laughs> For example, if you really don't believe in colorism, if you don't believe in people bashing women, if you don't believe in all this other stuff, you are part of the problem if you continue to support people who do. And what I mean by support is listen to their music. Like if you listen to these people's music and they're colorists, they're rapists, they're all these things, you are part of the problem. Sorry, but you are. For example, if Hitler made music, would y'all listen to it? You would. You probably would because you lack discipline and you can't stop listening to music. You can't stop supporting people who create art. So like you're saying you want to separate the art from the artist. How is that possible when their art is, is connected to them? Their art is a representation of themselves. Explain. Please explain to me because I don't get it. And by like those little flimsy dramas and things like that, like I don't mean anything like that. I feel like we shouldn't be invested into celebrities lives that much. But when I mean I'm saying like when they actually go out of their way to prove that they have been colorists. For example, I'm gonna say this one time, one time only, Kodak Black. I will never listen to his music, ever. I would never turn that man on. That's like the most archetype case that you can ever, he's been alleged rapist. I'm not, I hate when people say alleged because it kind of just always takes the credibility away from the woman, but you have to say that for legal reasons, so whatever. Also, I think he was on trial for it. I don't know if he got convicted, but whatever. He's a colorist, a proven colorist, multiple, multiple times. He's a bigot. He's very disrespectful when it comes to anyone, anywhere. Going after young Ma after she didn't said she does not want you. She is clearly homosexual. Make any sense? <laughs> like, what do you mean? And you're disregarding that. You're not putting respect. For example, if a, if a gay guy was to come after you guys and you'd be like, oh, hold up, hold up, that's disrespectful. It's the same thing. Like, she's over here clearly not wanting you, she's clearly not into men, and you are literally, don't, you, you're disregarding that, and you're just putting your ego at the forefront. Literally had no respect for when Lauren London lost her husband. You're like, oh, everybody was thinking it. Nobody was thinking that. Nobody's like, she's on the market now, we're all mourning a death, but you guys will continue, not you guys, like you, but I'm just saying in general. People will continue to listen to his music and have a disregard for it because it's a good turn up, you know? And I don't really agree with that. Even with the R. Kelly situation, how can you, how, how can you even listen to his music after you know this man is a, literally a pedophile? He has done so much, like, to women. And if it was anyone in your case, people don't care about things unless it's directly related to them. And I feel like that is the worst thing ever. We're all bystanders in that point. Like, do you guys know the case where the person actually was murdered and raped. Everyone, like, everyone in the neighborhood was like, oh, I heard it, I heard it. But you weren't gonna call the police? You weren't gonna do anything about it? You're a bystander. You over here thinking other people are gonna do something. What are you gonna do? What is your responsibility? You're responsible for it. You're just as bad as that person who raped and killed that person if you don't do anything. Sorry, that's how I feel about it. And, um, that's my unpopular opinion. When it comes to art and, like, music and, like, paintings and, like, different things like that when it's coming directly from the source and it's just one piece. How can you say that you're separating the art from the artist when they're speaking, that's their platform, you know what I'm saying? They're speaking to you, like it's a speech, it's really a speech, whatever, whatever, however you want to think of it. Rap is poetry, so they're literally speaking these words to you over and over and over and over. So, and they're projecting that through their music most times, so. My unpopular opinion I have is that we should be probably not that invested into these celebrities' lives because I, I don't really get it like I guess it's the new entertainment and you know reality TV is kind of like the entertainment but I feel like we shouldn't have that much concern in what they do on like a daily basis I don't know how to describe it. it's kind of a it's kind of an unhealthy obsession it's like fetishizing and like idolizing these people that we don't know I don't know how to describe that there's a fine line between those two things because as I stated before like who have proven and like just are blatantly ignorant then why would we support them but whether she's back with her boyfriend or things like little drama like that like that's kind of so kindergarten like i don't know we all adopted this like high school drama thing and like just people certain things is bullying you know if you're not going to support someone you can state why you're not going to support them and leave it at that but you don't have to go and harass them and call them names and do all these other things like you can state your point without being rude and disrespectful another po unpopular opinion is i feel like we should normalize um, having fun without smoking and drinking and I feel like every time I say I don't smoke or drink I kind of get this like weird people kind of like feel weird around me which is I don't get why because I look at you the same like I look at you no different if you smoke if you don't smoke 
you drink if you don't drink i don't care yeah like i really don't like when i go to a party obviously i expect people to do that because that's the common thing to do so i went there for a reason so don't like treat me different but just because i personally don't take part in it and like i just feel like i don't know i feel like a lot of people treat you different and look at you different once you say that like they feel like you're uptight or like they feel like you're trying to be better than them and it's like you don't even know the reasoning why and also asking why is a little bit like it's kind of not disrespectful but it's just like i don't know like the demeanor and what people and what people like the way they say it sometimes can seem disrespectful that's the only thing because you can ask anything like i don't think anything is a dumb question but um the way you say things is kind of always different than you know how it's taken just i don't know basically that's how i feel say that or like oh wow you're never gonna try it or you're never gonna do this or like no <laughs> if i'm saying i'm not gonna do it why are you trying to continue to persuade me it's not you know it's not really fun for me to kind of keep trying to explain over and over like why i don't do it it's kind of annoying <laughs> so i don't know if it, it should be more normalized to not smoke or drink to have fun and you don't have to do those things if you're in, if you're about to go to college or if you never smoked or drink before just know you don't have to do those things to have fun I literally have fun, more fun sometimes than the people who do smoke and drink at parties because I don't know, like I'm just fun, like I just have my own fun being myself and you know. I personally feel like, you know, people have room to grow and people have room to change and like everybody was probably a shitty person in high school. Everybody was probably a shitty person, not a shitty person, but like did things that they don't really, aren't really proud of, you know. Like I'm sure that I did things that I'm really not proud of and for right now, like I feel like if I ever did anything to offend anyone or hurt anyone, I I am genuinely sorry. Like I genuinely apologize. Like because I know how that feels and that does not feel good. Like anyone trying to purposely hurt you or intentionally or not, but you know, feeling hurt from another person is just not it's just not a good feeling. So I personally do apologize. So I don't know. And I feel like a lot of times we like influencers don't get that, you know, they don't get that chance to say that before they get caught you know what i'm saying it depends on what it is because if you have proven to continue to have those ideals today sharing those ideals that you said in the past and you haven't done anything to like correct it or you know we haven't proved we haven't seen that you've actually changed as a person then can't be mad that people you know don't really genuinely accept your apology or genuinely don't like you because of something that you said in the past but i feel like people have a lot of things that they can change about them especially like my opinions are not the same from when i was literally seven years old or 13 or 15 or even last year <laughs> so like you know we are ever evolving all the time so people some slack but just understand that everybody is a human being and we're all living on this earth to try to better ourselves every single day every day if we were all judging each other like you know we should stop judging each other so harshly because we are not the judges like we shouldn't be the judges only god should be the judge we literally shouldn't judge because we're not perfect <laughs> so how can we judge when we're not perfect you know we can just try our best and we can have opinions about people like i have a lot of opinions about different people and i choose to support them whether i believe you know like a fine line between like doing like judging people really harshly for something and you know just holding people accountable also another thing is i feel like we should understand that responsibility and blame are kind of similar but different so like i'm not blaming you but i'm going to hold you responsible for what you have done you know what i'm saying so i'm not blaming you for because blame has such a negative connotation but responsibility is like okay well you know we i acknowledge that you have done something you know and blame is like oh you're the worst or well, while you did this to me da, 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 da. no but i'm holding you responsible you have done something that actually hurt my feelings and blame is like, oh, I hate you. <laughs> I'm blaming you for my life being horrible, blah, 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 things like that. So I feel like we should hold people responsible for what they've done, but sometimes don't blame them. At the end of the day, we're responsible also. We're, we're responsible, but they're also responsible. If that makes any sense. Another thing I want to say is, like, we we shouldn't be, like, expected, especially as black women, like, saying that, oh, all men cheat or, like, you know we should be like we should have this struggle love or things like that i feel like that is like not that is not okay and that comes from like ens enslavement mentality you can have love without all of that all of that unnecessary struggle and like that just just like everybody else deserves that like just because we're a black woman doesn't mean we have to be there a ride or die for the long time like you know what i'm saying like 
that is not okay and like it doesn't mean also it like you can be a ride or die person because like me i know loyalty is a big thing i'm pretty loyal to like almost everybody i feel like your loyalty can have a limit <laughs> so yeah just kind of like that you don't have to go through hoops jump ropes and all that other shit just to be in love with someone you shouldn't be expected to either just because we are black and just because we we're black women to be with like a black guy who's gonna like put us through hell before we make it to the top and no that's not okay like also that goes hand in hand with like feeling like someone's supposed to cheat on you or like all men cheat blah blah blah, blah. or like first of all all men don't cheat um and <laughs> like we shouldn't be accepting that as our standard you shouldn't be like oh he's gonna cheat you know it's gonna it's okay like then eventually no what in the world like i would never but like kill me first let me try to scoop up the whole ocean with a plastic spoon before someone i expect like i'm gonna just stay with some because oh i expect them to cheat no <laughs> what <laughs> that's a joke <laughs> about homophobia and gayness how can you say that you're a homophobic or like people won't say that they're homophobic but they're like don't bring that gay shit over here gay shit over here i am gay so how can i not bring that gay shit over here like like guys would be like oh yeah like i can have a like not a gay friend but like a gay associate i guess but as long as you don't bring that gay shit around me what makes you think that first of all he's gonna bring that gay shit around you that you're even that attractive for him to even think about you that way second of all <laughs> gay shit around you he's gay <laughs> so what do you mean bring that gay shit around you i'm gay so if i come around you what is you talking about <laughs> like come on like i really never understood when people said that and like it's, it's so annoying like we gotta stop that like really we really do nobody is over here checking for you y'all really be more afraid of it which is kind of projecting your own insecurities and masculine toxic masculinity onto the situation it's like no one's over here checking for you anyway okay guys so that's it for this video um hopefully you guys like my unpopular opinions um and even if you didn't like them hope you like the style video if you want to see more of me then like comment and subscribe to my channel because we lit over here so <laughs> Period. <laughs> Hopefully I'll see more of you guys in our next video. So yeah, see you guys next time. Bye.